Ryan Jarrell here for MMA News, and you can see my next guest back in action June the 8th at UFC Louisville when he takes on Dominic Reyes. And of course, it is the Hanyak, Dustin Jacoby, back on the program. Dustin, how are you? I'm doing good, Ryan. Uh, thanks for having me on the show once again, and, and really looking forward to June 8th in Louisville. Yeah, man. I can't wait to see you back in there. You know what I was thinking, too, before uh, I actually heard the, this fight announcement and you fighting in Louisville? The PGA Championship is going on right now in Louisville at, at uh, Valhalla. It sure would have made a, a whole lot of sense if maybe you know we were able to coordinate it where you'd be able to, to fight Saturday and then see the final round uh, of a, a championship. Man, that would have been too perfect. But I was just out there for the Kentucky Derby. Uh, the UFC flew me out there, and I was able to do some interviews and uh, you know be around that for the first time. And then I actually had a buddy of mine, Jason Worth, a former MLB baseball player, had a horse in the race. So um, Louisville was awesome. I got to get familiar with the, uh, you know, just the area and where, where the KFC Yum Center was and where we're going to be staying. So um, just like when I fought in Nashville last August, I was there six weeks prior and I got a good feel for everything and did the same thing in Louisville, man. So I'm excited. Looking forward to June 8th. Now, is your buddy, is that the guy with the uh, the long lettuce? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering hair. who that was. I, I didn't know who that was. So I'm glad you, uh, cause I saw him all over ESPN. Yeah, man. He's, uh, he played several seasons in the big leagues. Uh, you know, signed by the Dodgers right out of high school, had a, had a great career with the Phillies and signed a big, uh, life changing contract with the nationals. So uh, as soon as he, he did that, you know, I was, um, I was going to all the games. We were hanging out. I met Bryce Harper before Bryce Harper could even drink a beer. Was old enough to drink, so uh, I was cool being around all the Nats guys. And uh, Jason's been a big supporter of mine throughout my career, and um, it was cool to watch him, you know, v venture into his next uh, deal that he's doing with the horse racing, and to have a horse in the Kentucky Derby that was super cool. Yeah, no doubt. And there's a lot of celebrities and and uh, people that go to that event. What was it like just walking around, maybe seeing people that you know normally you don't run into day to day? Well, I tell you what, man, I, I went from a fan of the Derby to the man of the Derby. I felt like I, I was the, the big man on campus. I met a, a ton of great people. I was, I was rubbing shoulders with billionaires, you know, not millionaires, but billionaires. They even picked up a couple sponsors out of the deal. But, um, yeah, I had cameras following me. And, and you know, I, I was there early in the week. So everybody knew me as the UFC guy. And, and then uh, when I got suited and booted and, and dressed up, everybody was like, who's that guy? And I got to meet a lot of people, man. It was super cool being around everybody. And. Uh, we, again, we were in the owner's suite. So, I mean, we were down on the track. We, we were, uh, I mean, even Pat Mahomes, I'm sure he was there, but even the celebrities that were there, they were on the fourth floor millionaires mansion. They weren't even on the track. Like I got to be on the track. So it was super cool, man. What a, what a great experience. Yeah, I, I saw some of the pictures that looked like a, a, just an amazing time, something uh, hopefully you get to experience again this time next year uh, with you being such a big golf fan and my, myself as well. I, I want to get your your pick for this uh, major championship that's going on right now. Obviously, uh, you know, mo most of the first round is essentially over. Shoffley's got a big lead, but who did who, going into the event? Who did you think was going to win it? So I'm in a pick em league. You pick uh, four golfers every major, and you can't pick the same golfer twice. Uh, and I went with some heavy hitters for this one. I, my four were Scotty Scheffler. I took Brooks Kepka. Um, I took Rory. I really have a feeling Rory McIlroy is going to uh, get it done. You know, it's been a long time coming. Uh, he's due. Uh, and then I took that, uh, what is it, Ludwig Aberg, the, the mm. Swedish guy, the, the young guy coming in. So uh, those are my four picks. Of course, I – um, I, I picked guys for the master, so you can't pick the same golfer. And, and unfortunately I didn't pick Scotty for the master. So I had to pick him, you know, he just had the birth of his kid. He could be a little distracted, but the guy's the, the best golfer in the world. So you can't uh, bet against him, but I, I have a good feeling. Rory is going to uh, have a good showing. He did just file for a divorce on Monday, which is never good. Uh, you know, the, the week of a big major, but uh, we'll see. Again, as we talked earlier, I haven't tuned in yet. I've been busy with practice this morning and and uh, my physical therapy and, and some other things. So just getting home, doing this interview, then I'm going to hop on the tube and get caught up on it. Yes, very cool. I do have a compliment I wanted to give to you. Hopefully you take it as a compliment. I don't know what it is, but there's something about Scotty Scheffler that reminds me of you or vice versa. I Physically, I don't, I don't know if it's the, the, the jaw or the beard or what it is, but uh, as I told you earlier, he's my favorite golfer. And, and sometimes when I see him, I'm like, he kind of resembles DJ a little bit. 
that's funny, man. I have not heard that one. I get Travis Kelsey a lot these days. You know, he's kind of blown up in the Taylor Swift. Uh, you know, all the, all the Swifties everywhere I go, man, you know, you look like Travis Kelsey, but I've not got the Scotty Shepard. I'll, I'll take it. You know, he's a good looking guy and I wish my golf game was half as good <laughs> as his, but, uh, it, you know, I, I can, I can hang. Yeah, no, no doubt. I don't know if you saw what Austin Rivers said recently about basically he could take 30 uh, NBA players and drop him into the NFL and, and they would do just fine. But you couldn't do that vice versa. You couldn't take NFL players and they could play in the NBA. You're probably maybe the, the best overall athlete in, in the UFC with everything that you've accomplished outside of combat sports. What is your take on that? I think that's garbage man i think that's completely the other way around there's so many guys in the nfl and i do think i saw that and i think i commented on that uh he, he had that backwards for sure there are so many guys in the nfl have you ever seen miles garrett the big defensive end everybody thinks he's just a big strong are you ever see him on the basketball court the guy jumps out of the gym uh freaking nature i mean he was dunking and, and barefoot out there like uh basketball players cannot translate to the NFL as well as NFL players to basketball. So I completely disagree with that. Now there there's, I'm not saying that there's got aren't guys in the NBA that can go play football, but what I'm in, I'm saying is those guys in, in the NBA that they, they flop all the time, that they're not as physical. You got guys in the NFL, man, that they're very physical. And I think, I think he's got it backwards. I think uh, guys from the NFL could come in and play in the NBA and, Guys in the NBA, while there are a few that probably could, could not do it as well. Well, I had to ask you that. One other thing I wanted to get your take on. Uh, I don't know if you saw the Tom Brady roast. If you haven't, you got to see I did. it. It's I hysterical. Did. Awesome. Yeah. If you could roast anyone at Factory X, who would it be and why? Man, we'd have to put the general Mark Montoya up there. I think I think that would be a fun roast, man. Uh, and, and as far as the guys... I don't know who would I have fun roasting. Probably Cody Brundage. He's such a, a jokester, get you know, cracking it, you know, cracking jokes to everybody else. I'd like to crack a couple jokes on him. That that would be fun. And I love Cody. Cody's a he, he's an easy guy. Oh, absolutely. To like. Yeah. <laughs> what what was your takeaway? Obviously, UFC three hundred. He was a, a massive underdog as far as the odds go to Bo Nickel, but he went in there. He had some good moments. He gave Bo the toughest fight of his career so far. What what's the takeaway from you know a teammate uh, standpoint here of that fight? You know, Cody. I'm just I'm really high on Cody. His own biggest enemy is himself. Is just uh, going in there extremely confident and believing in himself. Um, you know, we worked a certain game plan over and over for that fight. And in the back, he he was working the game plan to a tee. Then we got out to the fight, and he didn't work the game plan at all. Uh, didn't do anything that we worked on for the, you know, several weeks leading up to the fight. So, uh, you know, it, it's a growing experience for sure. You know, for him to go in there, I, I think he took some confidence away from that fight. You know, Bo didn't completely walk through him. But I still think the best version of Cody – go in there and beat Bo. I think he was the person to, to, to beat Bo and uh, just didn't happen, unfortunately, man. So once he gets it figured out, like I said, his biggest enemy, his own worst enemy is himself, man. He is so good everywhere, so strong. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to, you know, this next fight. He loves the matchup. He's fighting in Denver um, against a, a guy that's a striker, a guy that's here in Denver as well. So um, I'm really looking forward to him going out there and just believing in himself and uh you know leaving it all out there and I, I truly believe there's not many people that can beat him on his best night yeah al hassan that's the matchup uh do you think he gets it done does he does he finish him or is this going to be maybe a fight that has to go the distance no i think he finishes him i think yeah he's very confident plus he got he got this new hair treatment man added a bunch of swagger to his game so i think i think we're going to see a new version of cody he gets this new hair treatment he's not going to lose so wait, he did what Damon Jackson did. He went and had like his his hair restored. Yeah, yeah, he went to Turkey and he had uh, like the implants. They took hair from different spots and and put it, it made his hairline a little bit stronger and did it with his beard as well. And um, you know, it, it looks kind of goofy right now, but it's something that in the long run is going to look great on him and and uh, it's going to give him a new a new confidence, a new swagger. You got a nice head of hair, but if you were losing your your hair, would would you consider that? You know, I don't think I would. That's not uh, it's something that I'm too. But then again, I have a good set of hair. So 
Um, uh, you know, I'm thankful for that. It's kind of funny when I got matched up with Dominic Reyes and the photo came out, people were like, UFC's best hairline versus UFC's worst hairline. <laughs> I got a couple laughs out of that, but, uh, uh, yeah, man, I don't think I would. I'm I'm not really that type of guy, but at the same time, I don't have that issue. So maybe I would, who knows? All right. Well, we're going to transition eventually here to this big time matchup with Dominic Reyes. It has been six months since we saw you last DJ. What, what has life been like for you since? Yeah, man, I, in my last fight against Alonzo Minifield, uh, I unfortunately fractured my ankle. I tore a, a partially tore a, a tendon and ligament and the same ankle. And, and thankfully I did not require surgery, but I was in a boot for a little bit and uh, healing up. But, uh, you know, we've been back at training, been, been getting after it and, and uh, took a little while to slowly transition into, uh, you know, six weeks in a boot and a couple months of not being able to do any cardio set me back a little bit, but uh, we, we've got whipped right into shape and, and uh, we got presented the opportunity for June. I, I actually was really pushing for the UFC 303 card. I wanted to fight the end of June, uh, but June 8th is my dog's birthday. Uh, Dak's lucky number seven. So uh, I was like, hell, why not, man? I think it's a good day to go out there and get a big win. Now, did this injury happen in the Menafield fight? I imagine it did. And did it affect you, uh, if so? Yeah, so in the first round, one of the kicks I threw, I felt the ankle bone kind of crack. It was the big inside ankle bone um, on my right foot. And then, so then it took that the kicking ta uh, attack away, um, you know, and I, I felt it crack right right when I was in there, just put my poker face on and kept going. I, I think it was some chronic issues, you know, things that were lingering from, um, you know, just years of kickboxing and, and uh, years of, of competitive uh, fighting. So it uh, just caught up with me. And unfortunately, uh, it is what it is, man. And then in the third round, I think when he got me with that big punch that dropped me, I rolled my ankle and that's what tore the tendon and ligament. I was able to fight back up from that as we all know, but I think the damage was done. And unfortunately that one still really bothers me, man. I don't think that the better fighter won that night. I wish he would have came out uh, like he did against Carlos Olberg. I wish he would have came out like that with me, you know, I would have been a, a much easier to counter, but uh, you know, he, you live and learn and, and you move on. And, and I'm excited to go in there and, and test myself against, you know, one of the best guys in the division, Dominic Reyes is a guy that's, uh, you know, been on a, a little downfall here the past few years, but he's still very dangerous. He's big, he's strong, he's athletic, uh, arguably beat John Jones. So, and, and I know what it feels like to be down and counted out. You know, I, I know a lot of guys are counting him out. I see the comments. So RIP Reyes, Reyes is going to get knocked out again. And while I'm going to do everything in my power to ensure that, to make sure that happens, um, he's still a very dangerous opponent. You can't count that guy out. And I'll tell you right now, I'm not counting him out. I know I've got my hands full and I'm looking forward to the opportunity. Well, let's stick with, with this topic, right? Again, a lot of people have this matchup circled. It's, it's a big one in the division. I know it's a big one for you, especially after coming uh, you know, off of this loss to, to Menafield last time out. He does have four losses in a row, but when you look at who he's fought, they're all guys at the absolute top of the division. John Jones, as you said, a lot of people consider him the greatest of all time. Is, is this a guy in Dominic that is past his prime he's he's only 34 but do, do you feel like this is a guy that has gone past his prime or is it just been he's been in there with the best of the best dude i certainly do not think he's past his prime i think he has a lot to give he's like you said it man it gave me chills when you said it. he's but look at the guys he's lost to they're absolute killers they're the best guys in the world and this is a tough job man it's tough to uh to fight the best guys over and over and over again and then also you know, that fight with John Jones to go in there and, and to leave, he definitely left pieces of him inside that octagon. And, you know, he hasn't quite been the same since. And, you know, there's, you talk about getting broken uh, mentally and physically. I think that's a fight that broke him mentally and physically. And then you got to go fight a murderer's row of all the up and coming guys because you got the target on your back, you know? So um, I think he's just had a bad run. I think that a lot he left a lot of himself inside that octagon and i can relate with my khalil roundtree fight you know i i feel like i left so much of me physically inside there and then to a fight that i thought i won same with dominic reyes he thought he'd won that and you go to the de decision the scorecards and they read the other guy's name that breaks you man that, that takes a lot of wind out of the sail and i think that's what happened to him i, I certainly don't think he's past his prime i think he's just had a tough run man and, and that's what this sport will do to you sometimes 
Span, Prohaska, and Blahovich all finished him, though. Do, do you feel like this is a, a case where mentally he's broken or or physically? Or how would you kind of equate that? Honestly, I think a little bit of both. Me- mentally, for sure. But And then we've seen, yeah, they've all finished him. They've all uh, rung his bell. So, um, you know, th- there comes a point in time where you, you get caught and, and your chin kind of goes and you're just taking so much damage. And that's what we've seen with him, man. I, I mean... I certainly don't think he's past his prime, but, uh, you know, there are some uh, some flaws and some unfortunate events that have happened for him and, and uh, you know, getting knocked out is one of them. And that's one thing that I think that I'm pretty good at doing. And you ask me how I, I win a fight, I always say by knockout or TKO, that's what I'd certainly go in there to do. And, you know, that's what I plan on doing this fight. And that's how I think this fight's going to go. You said to me uh, leading up to the Menafield fight, though, that uh, or, or, or I, it was before that one. I can't remember who it was now. I've interviewed you so many times. I've had the pleasure of talking to you so much. It kind of blends together. But um, you, you didn't want to do any predictions or, or talking about, you know, what you think is going to happen because they watch your interviews. They watch what you say. Is, is that still the case? Or do, do you feel like, you know, very confident about this one that you can finish him and, you're, and you will do that? Well, I certainly feel confident, man. And in, in every fight I have, I, I'm confident. As long as I'm prepared, I'm confident. And I'm definitely prepared going into this one with with a little, a few more weeks left to prepare. And uh, yeah, man. I mean, you ask me how I'm going to win. I always think say by knockout. I think that I'm going to get the same, uh, the the same uh, outcome in this fight as well. All right. And stylistically, DJ, we know how good you are on the feet, how good of a kickboxer you are. Do you think you're just a bad matchup for him? You know, I could be, but at the same time, I think he's going to go back to And I say this all the time. I always think people are going to, but I think he's going to go back to his wrestling roots a little bit. Uh, but I think when I get in there and I, and I, you know, look at a Minifield, big, powerful guy, and he tried taking me down. I threw him right off of me. Uh, Kennedy and Zajeku, Put a lot of pressure on me. I kept waiting for the takedown. It never came. I got him. Da'un Jung, the same thing. Put a lot of pressure on me. And I know these guys game planned and wanted to take me down. I just feel like when you get in there and, and you get sized up and you get across from each other, it's a little bit harder than it appears to take me down. And and uh, we'll see, man. I think I am a bad matchup for Dominic. And I think uh, he's going to use his wrestling a little bit. But um, I think that, I, that that opens up my strike. And when he tries doing that, I think that's when I catch him. What does your UFC contractual status look like? How many fights do you have left on your deal? Yeah, man, I actually just signed a new contract for this fight. I haven't, uh, I haven't announced that yet. I need to. Um, I just haven't, I haven't been big on social media, but uh, I did. I just signed my a, a new con- a new deal with the UFC, my sixth contract overall. So, uh, very happy, man. V- very uh, happy with the position I put myself in, and, and with the company that I fight for, and and. Uh, and did, done a good job of taking care of me. And I, I look to go out there and uh, put on a great performance for them as well. That's awesome, man. So this is your six UFC contract. Uh, is it a four fight deal? Yeah, it's a four fight deal. Yep. Every, every fight I've done is a four fight deal. And, and uh, you know, financially just keeps moving on up. So very happy about that. Now, do you anticipate uh, signing another deal after this one runs out? Are we going to see you maybe, you know, 10 more fights in the UFC before you walk away? Yeah, man, I definitely like to get through this contract, another contract. You know, I, I you know, I'm, I'm still going strong. I know I'm in the twilight of my career, but I can zip through it three fights. And that, that's the thing. I've really zipped through these contracts the past few years as well. And I plan on doing the same thing with this one, getting three fights in and and uh, signing another one and just keep climbing the ladder and moving up. So what will camp look like for you here moving forward? We're still, you know, a few weeks out from June the 8th, UFC Louisville. What do you have left to kind of tighten up and do to get you ready for this Reyes matchup? Yeah, we're, we're down to the final stretch, man. A lot of the work's been put in. I got probably my last hard sparring day tomorrow. Um, and I'll continue, you know, training hard next week, the next couple of weeks. But it's definitely tailoring down a little bit. Um fine tuning some details we've been working on. You know, I, I do in my, in my private sessions with coach and just continue working the game plan, man. And then on fight night, you know, you train hard, fight easy. Can you give me a, a health update on coach Montoya? How's he doing? Oh, he's doing great, man. He, he's uh body's good. Mine's good. His golf game's good. So uh, we get out, we usually play a weekly game together and uh, he's doing great, man. Life's good for him. And, and his health is in uh, a good health. So, 
Um, you know, the cancer scare while he's not completely out of the dark, you know, he's still got to check up here, especially the first three to five years, I think. But um, I think he's been doing great. I think he's doing really well health wise. That's good to hear. Um, what, how, how did that golf bet with Gutierrez ever play out? Uh, Gutierrez actually won. He won the bet. There were, there was several, uh, gimme, so to speak. There were a couple more. We, the coach was very generous, uh, towards him. I think almost a little too generous to where he, he kept him in the game and he ended up sneaking out a win and coach got him a pair of Jordans. So kudos to Gutierrez for cashing out on some Jordans in the deal. So wait, he had to shoot under a, a what again? I think it was a one, one twenty. Had to shoot under a 120, and and I think it was close. It was very close. He did it by a couple strokes. Wow. Okay. I yeah. It, it, and he's it, never it was played. Impressive. And he's never played. It was actually impressive. But again, there were several gimmies. There were several. Uh, you know, they were helping him out along the way, so it was super close. Okay. So if we were going to go by the letter of the law and, and really hold him to it, he probably wouldn't have got a, under a 120. Absolutely not. No, <laughs> they, 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 it was a very generous, like 118, I think it was. 118 or 119, it was right on the edge. Okay. Do you know what kind of uh, Jordans he got? Are, are you a sneakerhead? I'm a massive sneakerhead, so I, I got to ask. You know, I, I am, but I'm not into like all the names, the numbers, the, the Jordan 3s, the 4s, the Lows, the Jump Jumpmans. I mean, I just see a pair of shoes and I get them. And actually, I've been on a, a kick here lately. I've got in the past couple of years, probably 10 plus new pairs of shoes. So um, coach put me onto this website and I go on there and I'm always looking at shoes daily. I just ordered another pair yesterday. My wife's going to kill me, but they're all training shoes. I, I run in the shoes. I train in them. So, uh, you know, they're helping me out. What's the website? DH gate. DH gate. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I've heard of them. Yeah. It, it was, the the UPS man and the FedEx guy is up the driveway far too often. And my wife, she literally like wants to kill me from all the shoes that I order. So I, I hear you. It's, it's an addiction. It's, but I guess there are worse it things is, to be addicted man. to. And the sad thing is, oh, there is, but the sad thing is, uh, you know, there's been a, a few new pairs of shoes I haven't even worn yet. I get them and then I just like put them on my shelf and they just look good and I hardly ever wear them out. So I'm a I'm a flip flops type of guy. I'm in my sandals daily and you know just to and from the gym. So that are my golf shoes. I I do I do like I got a good collection of golf shoes. Nice. I just got a pair of a Jordan One golf shoes that I absolutely love. Uh, sticking with the basketball theme, real quick. We're we're you know far into the NBA playoffs. I'm a huge Celtics fan. Porzingis is is out. If he comes back, I like our chances, but Denver looks good. What What is your prediction for the NBA Finals? Yeah, I think uh, Denver definitely looks good. I had them to repeat. Uh, I hope so anyway. You know, they're fun to watch. You know, I'm actually not a big NBA guy, but I anytime the playoffs happen, I tune in regularly. So um, I, I got to stick with Denver, man. I think they're the team to beat. Uh, they got the, the MVP and, and a great squad. I love their coach, too. Yeah. Well, I, I hope you're, you're wrong and the Celtics swim, but I, yeah, I had to ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, f fair enough. Denver scary. Jokic scares me. So does Murray. So we'll, we'll see what happens. A lot of basketball left to be played. Um, last thing for sure. me, before I let you get out of here and go watch the, the PGA championship, uh, I as far as moving forward this year, obviously June 8th, you know, you got this big matchup with Reyes. If you get this win and you're healthy, like, what, what would you like to do uh, the, the latter part of this year? Could, could we see you once or twice more? Or are you trying to take some more time in between fights and, and have full camps? Like what is your mindset as far as that goes? Yeah. You know, I definitely like to get back in there again this year. Uh, my mindset is to go in there, get a big win over Dominic Reyes. I think that, you know, that gets me back in the top 15 um, and, and it gives me the ability to fight up, you know, ever since I've been in the top 15, I've always defended the spot. I've always fought down. I've never had the opportunity to fight up ahead. And, uh, with this big fight, I, I would like to get Dominic Reyes. And then I'd like to get, you know, somebody in the top 10, so, somebody, you know, I've been calling for Ryan Spann forever. He fell out of the top 10, uh, Vulcan Ostemir is a fight. I've, I've been kind of eyeing, keeping my eyes on he's in the top 10. So. Uh, I, you know, first and foremost, I got one of the most dangerous guys in the division uh, ahead of me June 8th. I got to go take care of business there, get back in the top 10. And yeah, I definitely like to compete again this year. You know, if it's a quick, uh, quick first round knockout, 
Um, you know, Carlos Oberg just went in there and had a, a big knockout and took out uh, Alonzo Minifield. And, you know, I like that matchup as well. And, and I know he's going to want on that Perth card. So we'll just have to take a fight by fight, though. You know, I, you know, getting a little bit older, uh, you feel the body a lot more. So, um, you know, the, the, the fighting uh, can be easy. It's all the training, the daily grind, um, you know, keeping up in, in that regard that gets a little – uh, hectic and, and tough to deal with at times but um you know I, I feel great right now and and i'm excited for the opportunity i can't look past dominic Reyes. he's very he's very dangerous man can't wait for june 8th if you're an mma fan dustin the hanyak jacoby is must see tv i never miss one of your fights man and it's always a pleasure talking to you before we do sign off as always i want to give you the floor uh anything you want to plug anyone you want to thank the floor is yours yeah I, I sure do appreciate you, man. That means a lot. It really does. And uh, I always go in there and, and uh, fight for the fans, but try to put on a show. Sometimes, you know, that's uh, it's a little too distracting. And instead of going in there and just posting on the win, I'm like, man, I got to look good for the people. I want, you know, I want to be a, a crowd pleaser. But uh, yeah, man, I want to give a shout out to my fit foods. I'm actually wearing the hat. Those guys have been taking care of uh, my nutritional needs for this camp and, and uh, hopefully it's a, a you know a, a lifelong deal moving forward with those guys, and uh, they're taking care of my fight camps and outside of camps too. Uh, Sharps, I don't know if you've heard of the Sharps betting app, but it's like a social media platform for for gamblers, and you you can tail guide and it, it links with your sports book, uh, your sports book of choice. I think BetMGM is one of them. I just made a BetMGM account. It might uh, link with DraftKings as well. I'm not sure. Uh, but it's a platform, a social media platform that now you now you can tell guys, you, you can see everybody who's betting, you can see who's hot, you can see who's not, uh, you know, and I'm actually pretty hot on there right now. I've been hot with the Nuggets, uh, got one big uh, bet with the Avs last night. So uh, you should check them out. It's called Sharps, S-H-A-R-P-Z, uh, links, with, links with your account. I'll send you a code after this, actually. Uh, I know, you know, you probably like gambling and and have a, it makes it fun, man. It makes it fun, um, and and again, it's uh, it, it's just a, a social media platform for a bunch of degenerates. So, uh, but those guys have been great, man. I, I've I've been to deal with them, and I've had a lot of fun uh, playing around on the app as well. So, uh, my team at Factory X, my team at Landout Performance, Iridium Sports Agency, uh, just all the people around me, man. I want to thank them for everything, and and uh, we're gonna go in there and get another big win, June eighth. 